Welcome to Coffee with Closers, where we have genuine conversations about how businesses in various industries are cultivating fresh business. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us on this show. Very excited for the opportunity to chat with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so for the audience that don't know about you, can you share a little bit about who you are? Sure. I am uh, going all the way back. I'm a Michigan boy that came here in the 80s, pre-personal computers and have cut my teeth here in communication and advertising mm -hmm. ever since. So uh, with a few gray hairs on my head, I can speak to uh, being in communication prior to uh, the computer taking over the industry, uh, doing video, TV commercials, radio, all forms of media prior to the digital age. And then I've been a part of the transition of those uh, mediums and everything around communication since and everything that we're doing online these days. So with that transition that happened right in front of your eyes, what have you seen the traditional medium, what, what things that the traditional medium has been doing from a sales and marketing standpoint? What, what are some of the things that you should still adapt in the digital, in the digital arena that we're in? Yeah, I think um, it's a continuing evolution and a continuing struggle for people to figure out the best ways to communicate online and but there are basic tenets that always apply and that people always miss they were missing it 50 years ago mm -hmm. and they're still missing it now one of those of course is just simplicity um, keeping it simple that still serves us uh, both in every medium and also that people communicate visually. Human beings absorb information visually. So the power of uh, simplicity and visuals still is important regardless of the medium. So one of the common mistakes is to over complicate things with um, tons of written content. And if you go all the way back to radio and television and print, that could be a detriment. If you go to websites and online campaigns and emails now, it can be a detriment. So simplicity and getting right to the point and brevity is a benefit in human communication. But it's of course complicated these days by Google search and pay-per-click. And what's the best way to drive traffic to our sites? What's the best way to have our links be the most effective? So while you want brevity, that also has to be coupled with the best content that you can put together based on the information, based on good training, based on the information you're gathering so that you are fueling the search engines in the proper way. But when it comes back to the game of just getting attention for your business, having people pay attention to you, having people remember you, that hasn't changed in 50, 60, 100 years, and that can only be achieved by being different, by being simple, by being memorable. Th that has not changed. Most certainly, and I think the, you know, today, anybody can create content, right? All it takes is your phone, and you can be putting out a ton of content, right? You can take photos, modify, share it on your social network, you can create videos and share it anywhere, right? So, which means that everybody become a publisher, right? Which creates a surplus of content and that creates, it, it becomes extremely hard to get your message in front of the right audience. So what are some of the things that worked, even in the, the old days when, with media, I mean, obviously you had print and, and TV and all those things. What are some of the things that worked really well to, to get past the noise that was there that I think we're missing the boat yeah. today? Yeah, two things that you're touching on too, relevance, and that personal touch. So you were just touching on the fact that we're all publishing content now. And oftentimes that's very personal or it can be very personal. Well, that's an age old communication tool as well. How can I speak to somebody one on one? How can I break that wall so that I'm connecting with them, whether it's their laptop screen or their phone? How can I be so relevant to them and personal that they really hear and connect with the message. So that, again, that hasn't changed. Uh, being relevant, and that's a content struggle. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of your work is so important 
What's the most critical, important, relevant content that we can use to help clients? And then how can we serve that up in a way that's not just dry information, that we make it human, conversational, and personal? Mm -hmm. That's the, that's are there the answer. Any, are there anything in the traditional space that you think won't really work today in the digital? Um, you know, it's all adapting before our eyes. So things that won't work are already dead. Mm -hmm. Radios becoming, you know, digital serious radio, satellite driven radio where I can select my own radio content. Mm -hmm. uh, print is much the same, variable data. Um, and of course, everything I, I select video wise is of my own choosing. So it's already adapting. It's already becoming everybody's own personal choices to what they're taking in in all the mediums. Anything that wasn't working is already gone. So it's all it's all about like, hey, with that kind of you know, with that kind of surplus of content there, business owners need to be extremely patient when they are getting into these mediums, especially when they're thinking about creating content. Yeah, yeah, yep. and that sounds like so much at um, one of the many things that's at the crux of what you do is helping people understand the information that they're going to bring forward and bring to bear in their communication. Because at some point, you've got to talk to a customer, so that's a human conversation. But boy, you've got to be, you've got to have all your information organized properly and served up properly for search and, and for your online pay-per-click campaigns, as an example. And if you don't have that properly structured, you're going to lose that game. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is uh, two voices, and and then you you know bring in large e-commerce efforts and what goes into that, supporting it on the back end for search, but also being able to have it be consumer friendly for the buyer, and it really is kind of a two-headed target oftentimes. And you were touching on um, just that content, uh, being able to manage for a customer. Uh, for our potential customers and partners to understand the power of their content, mm -hmm. but that they need partners to help them groom it and curate it, vet it, and use it properly. Because it's not going to go into one bucket anymore. It's going to go into two or three so that you're uh, speaking to your, your digital target and your consumer human target at the same time, but oftentimes using completely different language. Most certainly. And the other thing that I was thinking too is, in the past, I think we had this mentality, I have the subject matter expertise and it's kind of my trade secrets. So I don't want to share that knowledge, right? And But that mentality also need to change because at the end of the day, the only way people know you as a subject matter expert is if you share your yeah. wisdom and, and an insight. But if you're holding on to that, most people who are in the market looking for the problem, you know, looking to solve their problem would never come to hear about you, right? Yep. So I think business owners and leaders in the organizations that has that subject matter expertise need to do a better job in speaking out that knowledge, right? So Zig Ziglar said, if you want to achieve your goals, help others achieve theirs. So by providing your insight and, and, and informational knowledge that you actually have, if you share that, by helping others, you help, you help yourself, technically. Yep. And if you know, make the change now. I think you're so right. If you're not sharing the information, if you're not being a thought leader, if you're not giving away information to draw people to you, believe me, somebody else is. There are no secrets online anymore. There's nothing. There's nothing that you can hoard to yourself as, a, as an expert. You, you got to give it away this day because if you're not, somebody else is. I think a very interesting related example of what you're talking about, I'll, I'll, I'll step out of our 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 business category for just a moment. One of my favorite musicians is a guitar player named Robert Fripp. I love this guy. Mm -hmm. King Crimson, he's a brilliant guitar player. And as people were starting to get cameras on their phones, mm -hmm. he spent several years saying, no video, no video at our shows. I don't want cell phones out. He was like, I, he felt like he was losing control. And, and but he reached a point where he accepted it. Mm. And now when you go to a King Crimson concert, he's up there with his own phone shooting the crowd. Mm. I mean, he, at some point he gave into it and he realized, I'm public property now. I'm all over YouTube. People are sharing me all the time. What am I resisting? Mm. So for anybody that thinks they can hoard their secrets and, or hoard their expertise, somebody else has already given it away. So share and share alike. Yeah, appreciate it.
Well, thanks again. I appreciate you joining us My on pleasure. the show. My yeah. pleasure. Good to see you again, Samuel.